sketchbooks. It's pretty much a ubiquitous part of every artist's toolkit, and I think it warrants taking a closer look. I've got a few questions like why you need a sketchbook, how to choose a sketchbook that's right for you, and how to use your sketchbook. So let's start with the why. Why use a sketchbook? Okay, let's take one step further back. Why use paper at all? Well, number one is convenience. With digital art, I have to boot up my computer, open up Photoshop or your drawing program of choice, set up my tablet, which is big as hell, and then draw. Maybe it's a lot easier if you have something like an iPad, but I'm broke, okay, so I don't have one. I find it a lot easier to just flip open my sketchbook and start drawing. Besides, when I'm drawing digitally, I find this odd pressure to make a finished piece. Like, I can't just walk away from a sketch. I, I feel the need to render and paint it and make it look super polished. Next thing you know, I'm eight hours deep into a piece, and sometimes I'm just not down for that. And you know what? I'm just gonna come out and say it. It feels nice. I like the feeling of paper. I like the way it smells. I like the physical feedback. Maybe I'm just being romantic about it. Or maybe we've been in lockdown for the last two years and I haven't had any physical contact with another human being. Anyways, there's the other matter of storage and organization. Sketchbooks are just a lot easier to store than say, a stack of loose paper. It's easier to carry around with you without the fear of damaging them. And when you're buying a stack of paper, it's always some stupidly large amount, like 200 sheets or so. And that's such a big commitment, you know? If there's two things in the world I'm afraid of committing to, it's relationships and overly large stacks of paper. Maybe at this point, I've convinced you enough to get your own sketchbook. I'm just kidding. I know you already have five empty sketchbooks lying around and that you promise you're going to use someday. Maybe after I finish this one, I'll use it. But oh, it's so nice. I don't want to waste it on my sketches. I'm going to ruin it. Now, I get a lot of questions about what sketchbook I use. And for the record, I'm using a Daler Rowney A6 Simply Sketchbook as of now. But what's right for me may not be right for you because artists are fussy creatures and you have your own special needs. So the first thing to consider is how you'll be using your sketchbook because that will inform a lot of your decisions. Number one, of course, is size. Now, I like to bring my sketchbooks with me wherever I go, so I don't want a sketchbook that's a pain to carry around. There's two things to consider, size and thickness. My preferred size is A5 if it's thin enough. If not, I'll settle for A6. Even if you don't plan on carrying your sketchbooks around, I would suggest you err on the side of smaller. But because the more convenient it is, the more you use it. You don't want it to take up too much space on your desk, then you'd have to put it away. And now every time you want to draw, you have to dig it out. And it's such a hassle. And the worst sketchbook is an unused one. My suggestion would be to start out small and if you find that you like drawing bigger, move one size up and keep going until it becomes too annoying and unwieldy. Speaking of annoying and unwieldy, let's talk about binding. Now, I like to draw across pages, so it's important to me that my sketchbook is able to lie flat. So no ring binding either. If that's not something that's important to you, then by all means, get a sketchbook with a ring bind. Otherwise, stitch binding or staple binding is fine. Never perfect binding though. It's cheap, it never opens properly, and over time, the pages will fall off. Let's not forget about paper. You need paper that's suitable for your preferred medium. If you like to paint in your sketchbooks, then something with a heavier paper like a 300 GSM watercolor sketchbook would be your choice. If you're just drawing with pen or pencil, then that's a bit overkill. The type of paper matters too. If you want some texture, go for a sketchbook with cold pressed paper. Now, because I like drawing with really wet inks, like, like a dip pen, I want my paper to be as smooth as possible so it doesn't feather. Best thing to do is run your fingers over the paper. And if you don't like the way it feels, chances are you're not gonna like drawing on it either. You might get kicked out of the store for feeling up the sketchbooks, but it's worth it. Lastly, of course, is price. Well, I'm not personally a fan of super expensive sketchbooks. Hey, it's your money. I just think that if you're spending $40 on a sketchbook, there's a small part of you that's telling you not to fuck this up. 
and that's not good. Sketchbooks are a place to fuck up. Sometimes they can be too nice to use, and the worst sketchbook is an unused one. So that brings us to how to use your sketchbook. Now there are a ton of videos on YouTube on how to fill your sketchbook. A term which I always found quite strange, fill. The end goal isn't to fill the sketchbook, it's to use it. You should never feel pressured to fill a sketchbook. If it takes you a year to fill, that's fine. It's okay. That being said, there are a few ways to use a sketchbook. As far as I can see, there are only three ways one can use a sketchbook. The first one, and most obvious, is to doodle. It fulfills a very mechanical need to draw. You just want to scribble, you want to feel the sensation of drawing something, so you doodle. It's meditative, it's grounding, it's, it's fucking great. <laughs> Second way is to study. This is drawing to learn. Bring your sketchbook outside to draw from life, observe the things around you and draw them. Study concepts and subject matters that you want to get better at. Anatomy, buildings, trees, whatever. It's sketching with a goal in mind. And the third way is to ideate. Whether you're doing thumbnails for a large-scale painting, or maybe you had a really cool idea for a spaceship piloted by a three-headed cat that shoots out poison dart frogs, and you just had to get it out of your system. You sketch to brainstorm. Now maybe you've thought about other ways to use a sketchbook and if you have, let me know in the comments down below. But at the end of the day, to say that there is a right way to use what is ultimately a blank piece of paper is the height of folly. Cut out the pages and make origami with them, who cares? But there is a guiding principle behind it all. A sketchbook is a journal. That's it. But instead of words, you have drawings. That's the magic of sketchbooks. Every page you draw on says something about that day. Even the empty pages, especially the empty pages. That's why I date my sketchbooks and it might even be a good idea to date each page individually. That bad drawing of a table? Hey, you took a leap of faith and started learning how to draw in perspective. That long stretch of you not touching the sketchbook? Well, maybe you weren't in a great place in life. Now you're feeling better, so you want to start drawing again. Sketchbooks, while they are seen as expendable, hold a form of permanence. It becomes greater than the sum of its parts. All these little throwaway drawings bound together tell a story that only you can tell. It's special in the way that you are special.